What's going on with Canada? You're not going to believe this, but our government and our media have told Canadians that MAGA type Republicans basically tried to stage a coup to destabilize our democracy. And they would ask, and this was Democrats and Republicans alike, they would ask, uh, but why would we do that? What possible motive, if we cared, which we don't, why in the world would we possibly want to destabilize Canada's democracy? What do you think of Mr. Trudeau? So I think he's an egomaniac. And I think everything he does is comes back to his egomania. Um, even his political ideology, you really think about his, his ex, this expansionistic role of the state. Um, it never comes back to serving an individual objective other than to make him more powerful or his legacy more uh, grand. Uh, so let me give you a few examples. So he he uh, slashed the amount you can put into a tax-free savings account. But then he simultaneously increased the amount you were forced to pay into the state savings plan. He um, killed multiple pipelines. Then he invested state money in a pipeline. He attacked parents' ability to take care of their own children by, by removing tax uh, fairness for families of the stay-at-home parent. And then he brings in a government program to replace it. Um, so what you're seeing there is you say, well, this sounds like these are utterly inconsistent positions. The answer, no, they're not. They're all very consistent. In all cases, what he does is takes away the ability of business or individuals or families to do things for themselves. And it requires they do things through him and through the state. Um, and and his ideology is always about creating a pretext in order to justify the state garnering more control over every aspect of your life, your, how you raise your kids, how your business functions, what you see and say on the internet. He believes the state has to be everywhere always, but that's because, as, as uh, King Louis would say, l'état c'est moi. The, the state is him. Why do you think he was and still remains attractive to a substantial subset of Canadians? I mean, people seem to regard him as charming and caring. And I think he is charming in a, in a kind of shallow sense. But it isn't obvious to me at all that he's caring, but he, he, he seems to play the part and he plays it well enough so that while well, many people, and this is true of people all over the world, certainly by the by the act. So why do you think that is? And and how do you combat that? Yeah, look, I, he is charming. I won't deny that. Um, and he's a good looking dude. Uh, but I don't think he's actually that popular. So people, people forget he got, he got 32% of the vote in the last election, 68% of those who cast ballots voted against him. That's the lowest he got, the, he got the lowest share of vote of any prime minister in Canadian history and before him the record was set by him in the previous election he got 33 percent of the vote um he never actually reached the height uh the vote share that Harper got in 2011. um so we we sometimes we think he's an extremely popular guy because of the adulation he gets from the mainstream media but in fact he's not that popular with ordinary Canadians what he he succeeded at doing to his credit is engineering a very efficient distribution of votes so that with 32 percent of the vote i think he got something like 45 or 46 percent of the seats um and that is the nut we need to crack he wins a lot of seats with with with, with few votes we win few seats with lots of votes um, in fact the last two elections conservatives have beat him in the popular vote we just haven't got them in the right places so we need to we need that's the change we need to make and i believe we will make in the forthcoming election so you don't think that it is a preponderance of Canadians who have had the wool pulled over their eyes it's no he's not he, by look by any objective analysis of the data he's not an especially popular prime minister um and in fact he's probably a, a, more on the side of an unpopular prime minister the, the Trudeau policies are definitely designed to basically make the entire media apparatus dependent on the goodwill and 
the good, um, yeah, the goodwill of the state. Um, they have a, a government uh, bureaucracy that determines what is considered to be a qualified journalistic uh, company, um, and they pick and choose uh, based on their own political views who then qualifies and therefore gets the subsidy. Um, I think this is designed to, uh, again, create more dependency on the government and, and curry more favor with the state. Um, I haven't made an announcement on exactly how I'm going to fix that problem yet, but I, but I, I guess I would say stay tuned on that. Uh, I, I want to depoliticize um, that and, and basically restore the freedom of the press in this country again um, by getting the state out of it. Well, they seem the, 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 the people who purported to, to care for the working class, and this certainly happened with the American Democrats under Clinton, seem perfectly willing to sacrifice the economic interests of the real working class, yeah. those people who exist right now, to some hypothetical utopian future. And every time push comes to shove, the real working class takes a walloping hit in the name of this hypothetical future utopia. I mean, you see that on the energy front. We talked about policy there. And that's certainly not only the case in Canada. You know, I think that we're, we're divided right now in Canada because um, of a deliberate strategy of divide and conquer. Um, governments that want to enhance their control, they have to turn citizens against each other. Um, they have to make you afraid of your neighbor, your coworker, your trucker, so that you'll turn to the state for protection against your fellow citizenry. And that's the oldest trick in the book, divide and conquer. Um, control is by its definite, by its nature, divisive because it's a zero sum game. If one gets more control, another must have less freedom is not the is the quite the contrary um if you your neighbor gets more freedom you don't get less freedom the likelihood is you'll have more as well so if, you, if, if your friend has more freedom of speech well you'll have freedom of speech if you are if the immigrant has the freedom to work as a doctor then you'll have the freedom to have a doctor if the local small businessman has the freedom to function without red tape uh, then you'll probably have the freedom to buy his products more affordably or your teenager might get a job uh, with the freedom to have a job with them. But hopefully we'll have secured the freedom that we inherited for many more generations to come. And that's that's what I mean when I want to give people back control of their life in the present. It's also um, to extend it into the future.